O M G players! Just when you think you get out, they pull you right back in. I've got some reinforcements for my dwarves. A good friend of mine said that he had these, uh, that he was thinking of giving away, and I said, hey, you know, I'm doing this dwarf project, so I thought to myself, why not pick him up? I got him for really, really cheap. It's just a bunch of Battle for Skull Pass stuff with some other random bits and bobs thrown in. I got a really, really good price on him, and I'm thinking, once I add these to my already considerable battalion force, that it's gonna make it even more awesome, and uh, I'll probably be able to charge a whole lot of money when when I decide to sell these guys off on eBay or when, you know, if I decide to wait for the next edition of the Chaos, no, not Chaos, but the, uh, the next edition of the Dwarf Army book to come out and everybody's gonna be want to be scooping these old figures up for, for their armies and I think uh, I can get a good price for them, but let's look at what I've got and th there's also stuff that I've got uh, in my collection over the years that I've just random bits and bobs, so so for here, for the first part of the reinforcements, uh, part of this new Project Dwarf Accelerated or PDA, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 dwarves with hand weapon and shield. I've got 8 great weapon dwarves, which I can add to my great weapon squad. Thunderers, which come in the box set and also they come in the Quarrelers and Thunderers box set, but they came in the old Battle for Skull Pass game as well, so so if you know anyone who has these old boxes, if you've got a box lying around and you have these dwarves around, then they're, they're a great little addition. And I think the guy, my friend who modeled this, put the shields on the back so they can be used as um, rangers, I think? Is that it? If you give them shields, or if you can just give them shields anyways. But I was talking to him and he also thinks that putting great weapons on these guys is also a, a great idea so they can they can hold their own in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Sorry for the shaky cam. Um, yeah, so 6, 12, 18 Thunderers. The Dwarf Handgun is really good. It's got a good rule that I think it's um, plus one to hit or plus minus one to the enemy's armor save or something like that. Plus one or minus one to something that's really good if you're a Dwarf. It just doesn't have as long of a range as the crossbow does. Um, but I guess it all depends on your play style. So having one of these in my army will be great because I, whoever uh, has this army can mix and match. See, I'm already thinking that I'm going to sell them. Then you've got these great little character pieces which I might paint up just for fun. You've got the grudge pony and the dwarf wall which comes in the old box set and these are good because Warhammer has rules for defending obstacles and walls and stuff so never painted an actual piece like this before. So it'll be fun to do that. And um, let's see what else we've got. All right, and then we've got some more Battle for Skull Pass dwarves. These are the guys that actually come in Battle for Skull Pass. They're one piece miniatures, which means that they have no assembly required. All you have to do is pop them out of the sprue and stick them on the base. So if you're not really into the modeling aspect, you want to just get out and play, then and you play dwarves, these old Battle for Skull Pass models are the way to go. You don't have to glue the arms or the shields on, they all come in one piece. Also, a good thing that I like about these are the banners that come with these guys are completely different than the banners that come in the box set. So you saw how many leftover banners and, and horns and musician stuff you had from that, but in these, it's really awesome that they all come already put together and that they're unique and different and individual from the ones in the box. So. We've got these dwarf warriors, here's the unit champion raising his hand weapon above his head. You've got the dwarf Thane right here. Pretty cool, really, really, really interesting looking model. Hand weapon and shield. We've got a cannon and that comes with the Battle for Skull Pass. And here's a second one that um, that my friend who gave me these had left over that he built up himself. In the uh, Battle for Skull Pass, you also get eight miners. Don't know how much you can do with only eight now. I mean, you might be able to burrow them up behind enemy lines and have them attack war machines, but eight is such a small number in today's go hoard or go home um, fantasy environment that well, you might want to beef them out if you, if, you, if you can. 
I don't know if I'm going to, because I don't know if I'm going to go with this project. And here are my hand gunners. Some more hand gunners to add. And see, they've got such a cool looking banner. Their banner has handguns on it. <laughs> and their musician over here has blowing into this horn that comes out of these two dragon headed things at the top. Really awesome. Really cool. And he's got a handgun on his back, so you know that he belongs with a handgunner unit. And also, since we're looking at musicians and standards, let's take a look at the standard for for the miners. Got this really awesome cross pickaxe. Well, not cross, but like two dual pickaxes at the top with a little lantern. I might try some OSL, like I did for my lanterns way, way back when I first started posting videos. I got a little bit better at it than those couple years ago. Then you've got the musician, and the minute I saw this guy, I was like, so he's got a horn, which unit is he in? Oh, he's got a candle above his hat, his helmet. He's a he's a miner. So I love how GW differentiated, like, oh yeah, the miner musician has this candle, the, the thunderer musician has a gun slung over his back, and the warrior one is holding a hand weapon, like the rest of his boys, hand weapon and shield. I've also got a couple more stuff for my PDA Project Dwarfs. Awesome, the A is for awesome, or accelerated, or absolutely freaking crazy that I'm doing another of these projects in some shorter amount of time. But uh, let's, let's show you what else I've got. And here's the last round of guides. I've got the Plastic Dwarfs uh, Troll Slayer from the Battle for Skull Pass box set. Three metal Slayer command unit models with a really top heavy standard. I have to figure out how I can counterweight that so it balances. And even though I don't have a Slayer unit, I might be getting one soon. Maybe Avatars of War plastic box set. Add some Slayer goodies to this army. Here you've got your fine cast BSB patched up his banner with some liquid green stuff. Then you've got the Thane riding his, or the Dwarf Lord, Thane, Lord, whatever he is, riding on a shield. And an old school boat thrower. I've also got a grudge thrower in the box that I just got with the flying cast um, grudge, grudge thrower, but I haven't unpacked that yet, so I'm not going to put it out. But here are the, um, here, here's all of it. I'm going to see how much I can get done by the end of the month. So Project Dwarfs is continuing. We're now going into Project Dwarf uh, Overtime, Accelerated, Afterburner, Overdrive, Live, and um, it's going to be really awesome. I'm going to stick it out to the end of the month. I obviously I don't expect to get all of this done by the end of the month just because it's so much more than than the battalion set. It's like doing like a battalion set and a half, considering the that it's a whole Battle for Skull Pass set with um, an extra box of other stuff thrown in. Looks like more uh, the double-handed weapon warriors. These these war machines, like two new cannons, a boat thrower and a grudge thrower. So lofty goals for the next 14 days, 13 days, 14 days, but. Um, I, I want to do it just to encourage you guys out there who are taking my painting challenge to continue on and not to let um, not to, to let yourself get distracted or side sidetracked if you're really set on finishing at a certain time then um, just to do it you know because I'm all about setting a goal and I, I, I met my goal I'm stoked I'm super happy that I finished my my project project uh, doors in only 17 days but um, yeah, I want to keep keep the momentum going. So, so that's why I thought I'd I'd spring for this deal when my friend um, offered it. And so, so um, let me know what you think. If you think I'm crazy to continue, I know I want to um, to finish these guys up by the end of the month and kind of focus on them. So I I also like I said in my last video, I've got a bunch of other of other battalions and just army boxes just kind of battle forces just sitting around because you know stuff you pick up on a whim that you end up thinking like why did I buy that I'm not even gonna gonna have that army but you know challenge yourself to to get a lot of stuff done and I thought since I'm already doing dwarves this would be a pretty fun and um, interesting way to, to close out the month so 
Project Dwarves still going full steam power ahead, and um, thanks to all of my subscribers out there. Thanks, to, thanks you guys like so much. I really mean it for for commenting and for encouraging me. Like <laughs> one of these labor of loves, long term project things is um, just a lot of it's a lot of work, you know. And so it, it helps that that you guys enjoy it, and I, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying getting everything together and painting and and just relieving my stress by by seeing seeing stuff that looks like this when you first get it, just like shiny pewter or metal models and then ending up you know looking like that when they're all done so that's what I hope to do get all these guys done as much of it as possible so stick with me and we'll see you as Project Dwarfs kicks it into overdrive <laughs>